ever dreamed of selling everything and moving to Thailand? I know you have. Well, today we're going to meet someone who lives right up there and he has done it. He's not only sold everything and moved to Thailand, he's got himself a different passport and a secondary citizenship. This is an American guy who's living the dream that you might be sitting there thinking about living. And we're gonna chat with him and hear his full story. I'm really looking forward to this one. So let's go meet him. He's right up there. Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. A comment from a user asked if I would make a video about how I ended up in Thailand. Well, as it's pouring the rain behind me, I guess it wasn't for the fact that it never rains in Thailand. Well, why am I here? That goes back to January 20th, 2021. Let's explore that further. Let's go inside. Ah back at my desk. Not raining in here. All good. So, as I said, someone wanted to know how I got to be here. Well, we'll turn the clock back. It was January 20th, 2021. That happened to be the first day that Joe Biden was inaugurated president of the United States. And on that day, he went straight to his office and he signed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 15, 17. He signed 17 executive orders his first day in office. And I keep up with the news. So what did he sign? First one was about regulation and directed the Office of Management and Budget Director to develop recommendations to modernize regulatory review and undid Trump's regulatory approval process. First thing. The next thing he did was a simple little ethics, which requires all the executive branch appointees to sign an ethics pledge barring them from acting in their personal interests and requiring them to uphold the independence of the Department of Justice. Yeah, right. The next one he signed extends deferrals of deportation and work authorization for Liberians with a safe haven in the United States until June 30th of 2022. And I say gave them a 30-month extension. The next thing he did was to overturn another one of Donald Trump's policies. He immediately signed an executive order halting construction of the border wall by terminating the national emergency declaration used to fund it. Then he picked up another pen and he undid Trump's expansion of immigration enforcement within the United States. And then he picked up another pen, and he signed a immigration which reverses the Trump administration's restrictions on U.S. entry for passport holders from seven Muslim-majority countries. Uh, those are the countries, you know, that hate Americans, hate the United States, countries whose 
motto it is, death to the U.S. Trump didn't want those people in from those countries. So he immediately X'd that out. The next thing was on immigration. He fortified DACA after Trump's efforts to undo protections for undocumented people brought into the country as children. Then the next one, this is big. He required non-citizens to be included in the U.S. Census, which automatically adds to the apportionment of congressional representatives, knowing that non-citizens who illegally cross into the U.S. border might vote Democrat. He wanted them included in the census. So where the immigrants are, there would be more elections for more congressional representation. Based on your population, you may ha get an extra representative in Congress. Sounds like a good thing for him to do. And then he did a couple on equity. He signed an executive order to prevent workplace discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. Equity. Another Marxist, socialist way to divide the country. And then he wanted to rescind Trump administration's 1776 commission and directed all agencies to review actions to ensure racial equity, not equality, equity. There goes the merit system, folks. And then on the day he was elected, he signed an executive order that cancels authorization for the Keystone XL pipeline and directs agencies to review and reverse more than 100 Trump actions on the environment. So just throw away that oil. We don't need it. And then on his first day, he, he wanted to rejoin the Paris Climate Accord, reversing us getting out of the Paris Climate Accord. Because we all know that we want to abide by the UN's 2030 agenda of 17 sustainable goals. Right. Then we had a couple things on January 20th on the economy. He wanted to extend the existing pause on student loan payments and interest for Americans with federal student loans until at least September 30th of 2020. I'm not sure that they started paying the loans more than a couple months ago in 2020, late 2023 or 2024. That just kept getting extended. They don't have to pay them back. You know, we love the students. The college educations are great. Did I say educations? I meant indoctrinations into the Marxist socialist uh, democracy being promoted by the Biden administration. After all, they are promoting democracy. And when they say that Trump will be the death of our democracy. They're probably right. Because you see, the United States of America in 1776, the Constitution delivered a constitutional republic, not a democracy. A democracy had its origins in early Greece. A true democracy is where the majority of the people can vote for any particular thing they want, and if the majority votes for it, it becomes law. In fact, ask Socrates, 
they didn't agree with what Socrates was saying. So the majority of the Greeks voted to just have him killed based on what he was saying. That's a democracy. And a democracy can also elect their king or president who has full authority to write whatever law he or she wants. That's a democracy. We have a constitutional republic where you, the majority can't just decide they want to execute somebody and write a law. There's a constitution and it should be followed. But these items here come from a lot of Marxist and socialist policies. So, on January 20th, his first day in office, he also signed an executive order extending the existing nationwide moratorium on evictions and foreclosures until at least March 31st. Late in 2023, you couldn't evict anybody out of California, if my information's correct. This was 2021. It got extended lots of times. And now we go January 20th on coronavirus and create a position of the COVID-19 response coordinator reporting directly to Biden and managing efforts to produce and distribute vaccines and medical equipment. All right. And here's a good one. He then signed the executive order that stops the United States withdrawal from the World Health Organization and appointed De Anthony Fauci becoming the head of the delegation to the World Health Organization. Boy, that's a good idea. That's, that's the Marxist organization that really wants to take over the world. And right now, in today's time, the WHO's trying to get countries all over the world to say, in the event of the next pandemic, we can take over your country and we determine what happens. Like that's supposed to happen, right? And then, of course, there was four more executive orders on masks and promoting the global health security agenda and requiring mask wearing in airports and on certain modes of transportation like trains, airplanes, and boats, and inner city buses. And international travelers had to provide proof of a negative COVID-19 test before coming in the U.S. And then we get to January 21st, and he was signing all these coronavirus orders. But after January 20th, I decide, you know something? This isn't the country I fell in love with when I grew up. These policies were in direct opposition to a constitutional republic. And it seemed like they were absolutely designed to hurt the country, not help it. So, at that point, I decided I am going to sell everything from the United States and divest myself of the U.S. and go to where I'm treated best. Now, after I got in Thailand, I had an interview with someone I had been conversing with and following on YouTube for a long time named Chris Parker. He conducted an interview of me in Bangkok at my condos and put out an excellent video where he asked a lot of questions. And I'm going to play that video for you because he did a better job than I can do myself. And 
we'll see how it goes from there. But you want to know how I ended up in Thailand, at least some of you did. This is going to tell you some of the things that happened, some of the reasons why I'm here, some of the reasons why I stayed here. And I think you'll enjoy the video. Have you ever dreamed of selling everything and moving to Thailand? I know you have. Well, today we're going to meet someone who lives right up there and he has done it. He's not only sold everything and moved to Thailand, he's got himself a different passport and a secondary citizenship. This is an American guy who's living the dream that you might be sitting there thinking about living. And we're gonna chat with him and hear his full story. I'm really looking forward to this one. So let's go meet him. He's right up there. So I'm here with Mark. So I wanna start your story. Right when you were deciding that you wanted a second passport, what was going on? Well, it was January, 2021. And I just watched the American government sit down and the president write executive order after executive order, you know, canceling things that used to be ongoing, like the Canadian Keystone Pipeline with signature of pen. And I had been watching a lot of YouTube videos, including yours, on thinking about leaving the United States anyway. And then it came to me from my research that I don't own my passport from the United States. What do you mean by that? You don't own that passport. You buy it from them, you had to pay to get your passport, but they can cancel your passport at the click of a finger. I mean, if they decide that nobody from the United States can travel to Thailand, when you try to fly to Thailand, your passport's not valid. They could make somebody else mad in the world and maybe some country that you wanted to go to was mad at them and said, we're not letting people with U.S. passports in. So I watched another channel online and uh, they had a lot of good information about the fact that you can buy a citizenship by investment. And so you weren't doing this because you were going to move abroad. I know that the American system is one of the only ones in the world that taxes based on citizenship. You weren't looking to get rid of your U.S. citizenship. You're looking almost as like a secondary citizenship as an insurance. It's an insurance. It's a plan B. The United States government, if they decide that I can't travel, well, this is my United States passport. And this is the passport from the island of St. Lucia. So before we get to St. Lucia specifically, you decided you want a second passport. How did you end up landing on St. Lucia? Are there lots of options out there? Well, for one, it had the best price at the time for a single individual. Their base price was 100,000. 100,000 US dollars? 100,000 US dollars. Plus you, you pay to have an investigation done. That's like 10,000 or 9,500 or something. And that's to submit your paperwork. But you're not allowed to submit your paperwork by yourself. You have to hire one of their approved agents. So I sent out an email, I interviewed all the agents, found one I thought I could trust, and agreed to pay him his agency fee. And then he sent me the papers and what I needed to do, which was extensive. And I'll get into that probably in more on my channel videos on, on all that. But it took about three months to fill out and find all the paperwork. Like if you were divorced in 1973, you know, they wanted to see a copy of that divorce decree that you had no idea where it is. So after you get all the paperwork together and submit the uh, application, how did the process play out? After I got the paperwork together, I went back and forth with the agent and he said, it all looks good. Put the originals all in an envelope, FedEx them down to St. Lucia, along with 10 more thousand, and we'll submit them to the government. And then the government takes them and they do a really deep background. Now, if you're a criminal, you ain't got a chance. If you got DUIs, you might not have a chance. If you had DUI 20 years ago, yeah. And here's the thing, here's why they check. 
other governments don't really like it. The United States would rather this didn't exist. But this is a small island, a beautiful little island. The government doesn't want to bother you. The taxation's virtually non-existent. There's no hassle, no headache. They get money by selling these citizenships. You know, you're representing them. Because I could see a lot of people being interested in this, particularly Americans. But I have a friend who's 37 years old, American, has recently left has a great job overseas, thinking of starting some businesses, has to file taxes back in the U.S. Oh, every, okay. every year. I'm Canadian, so we just declare ourselves non-tax residents when we don't live there, don't have to file. But I could see a lot of Americans, like $100,000, a ton of money. But if you can avoid paying the rest of your life to the IRS... I could do that, but that was not the reason. I mean, I have sold almost everything I have in the United States. I've got a place in Florida that I'm not using. That's my official address is in Florida. Everything is in Florida. But yeah, you know, I love my country. I'm not really happy with it at the moment, but I love my country. There's never been a bigger state of change in the United States as there is right now. Everything's changing all the time. Nobody likes each other. Half the country hates the other half the country. You don't know what's gonna happen. And look, I got so many trips around the sun, buddy. Okay, I don't want them screwing with my life. So for a hundred and something thousand dollars, I get the insurance policy. And there's another benefit. You know what a chore it can be to get visa or residence status like in Thailand. This passport right here, they are a member of the East Caribbean community. That allows me to take this passport and move in without paperwork to about 20 countries in the Caribbean. And they share the same currency. You're allowed to work in any of these 20 countries. And all these places that you can go, show them your passport, you're a citizen. You're just like the EU. Somebody in, in Italy can pick up, drive to Spain and say, I wanna live here. I'm gonna rent an apartment. I'm gonna live here, right here in Madrid or Barcelona and no paperwork required. So this passport gives me 20 places I can run to. Walk in the door and they say, welcome. Wow. I've heard about a lot of these kind of global nomads who, who take multiple citizenship. Is there residency requirements? Like, do you have to spend, oh, cheers. Cheers, we buddy. We finally got it. This is the guy. This is two who years. Who sent a video to me two years ago playing the guitar, saying, I'm gonna go to Thailand, I'm gonna... Buy it. Chris a beer. Yeah. The words to that little limerick was, you only get so many trips around the sun, I'm gonna sell my house, my cars, my guns, I'm gonna go to Thailand, have a little fun, I'm gonna buy Chris a beer. And we did it, brother. We did it. So back into this, so St. Lucia doesn't require you to spend six months of the year on the ground there. I've heard that some of this, these some places do. do. Some do. This one has no requirements whatsoever and no taxes on your income. If I move down there and I have a YouTube business that's paying me money to my U.S. residents, they don't want a piece of it. Now, sure, they got value-added tax when you go buy some groceries at the store or a big screen TV if you live there. They're is, not going to charge you Is there an annual fee? Does, is it, does this last a lifetime? No. Well, the citizenship lasts a lifetime. The passports, like other passports, need to be renewed in five years. When the time comes, I just contact the St. Lucia Embassy and say I need to renew my passport and they'll send me a new one. I mean, the paperwork was extensive. I mean, it was that thick. So you got, you got 20 countries. You get your passport. We're, we're, you're, you're all approved. You got 20 Eastern Caribbean island nations at your disposal. We're sitting in Bangkok. How'd that happen? Because I watched your videos all the time and the people were just so nice. And uh, I just got sick of the Western world, okay? I have been here. I've not been to a McDonald's. I haven't been to a Burger King. We get fried chicken from a grill on the street three times a week. We get fresh fruit on the street four or five times a week. I mean, the food here, I thought I'd come over here and lose weight, 
Well, that's been a losing proposition, let me tell you. <laughs> How long have you been here? I left July 4th of 2022. Oh, wow, Independence Day. I left eight. on, you know why? Because they were having Armageddon. All the planes were grounded. 2,000 flights a day, you know, canceled, all that. And I said, you know, the Americans like to drink beer and Kirk burgers on July 4th. Nobody's going to be flying July 4th. So I waited to July 4th because if you remember, Thailand opened up July 1st to where you didn't have to come with your COVID certificates. Yeah. I spent three minutes in customs. I spent one and a half minutes in line. I went to the desk. She said, boarding pass, passport, stamp, 30 days, out the door in under three minutes. Welcome to Thailand. So I waited in June. The last big thing I had to sell, my house and then finally my car. I got rid of the guns earlier. And then I just waited July 4th. I flew nonstop to Tokyo and Tokyo nonstop to here, first class and loved it all the way on Japan Airlines. And I said, I'm out of there. How long do you think you'll be in Thailand? I'm gonna use this as my base of operations. And now that I finally got through the visa nightmare that I went through, I've had the regular visas, I've had an educational visa. I had to make a border run on the educational visa because they wouldn't exchange that for an O retirement visa. There's some sort of rule they say, you can't go from an education or retirement visa. So fly to Laos, come back, get a regular stamp in, and then we'll put your- and So now you're on a retirement Now visa. I'm on a retirement visa. It's good through April of 2024. And I always say on my channel, careful, or you might sell everything and move to Thailand. I've only met a few people who did it, and you're one of them. So. I am happy to death. You know, I've never met nicer people. I wanted to buy a computer monitor. I went to Fortune Town. You know why I went to Fortune Town? I saw you go to Fortune Town on your channel. So I asked the girl behind the counter, I had a bunch of packages, and I asked her which way to the elevator. Girl picked that monitor up, carried it to the elevator, got in the elevator, went down four floors, took it outside in the rainy season, pouring down rain, asked me where I wanted to go, hailed a cab, told the person in Thai, because she spoke good English, where I needed to go to, and refused a tip three times. I finally had to force a hundred baht into her hand. Well, that's not happening in Best Buy back down in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you got the same chance as Dillinger had in an alley in Chicago of getting that to happen in the United States. I was in the BTS here. A young man tapped me on the shoulder and said, sir, would you like my seat? Because you know, I'm 67 years old. This kid was 19. In Chicago, he was shot me for blocking his view. <laughs> you don't get that in the United States. That's why I come here. You know, the security guards here, they all know your name. I came to the building today. They security stopped me. Who are you here to see? It's a giant building. I said, I'm here to see Mark. Aha, Mark. Yes, go come in. Go say. Yeah. We go out for food. I'll just bring back all the security people food. Here, have some grilled chicken, have some grilled pork. Just to say hi because, you know, it, you can be a dick or you can be nice. It's just better to be nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's better just to kind of live life. The and, whole uh, world had Thai people who believed in karma. Must be part of their Buddhist roots. Yeah. Has to be, but Place. don't get them behind the wheel of a car or behind the handlebars of a motorcycle. No, when they they do, turn crazy when in they, Bangkok. When they do go off, I've seen whiskey bottles flying. But they can get, they can fly off the handle. But I think you know you have to, uh, you have to kind of set them off, and it's pretty rare. Motorcycles drive the wrong way up sidewalks, the wrong way up streets, the wrong way. I saw one on the steps the other day. I mean, coming down steps, how do you get there? I don't know. It's just fun to watch. So, yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, you're living your best life, man. And I, I congratulate you. I'd, I'd love to ask you one final question. And that's if there's someone out there watching who's the you of a, a few years ago, you know, feeling like what's what's out, what else is out there? Maybe they're sitting in Cincinnati wondering what else is out there. What would you say to them? Go where you're treated best. If the government don't treat you well, pick up and move. If the weather don't treat you well, 
pick up and move. One of the reasons I'm not in Eastern Caribbean is hurricane system. I mean, these guys keep getting hit with hurricanes all the time. And my ex once said, never live in a place that has evacuation route signs on the highway. If you see a sign that says evacuation route, don't live there. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah, so if you're thinking about doing it, let me tell you, there's only one dream that can go bad, and that's a dream you don't take. That's a dream you never embark upon. What's the worst that can happen? You don't like it? Move back. Yeah, that's great advice. Or if you don't like it, move somewhere else. Well, that's some amazing advice, ma'am. Uh, it's great to finally meet you, and thanks for telling your story. I, I think it's really inspiring, and if you guys want to hear more about his stuff, he's, he's got a channel called At Mark. Dash Hannah. At Mark Dash Hannah, H-A-N-N-A, and he makes videos sharing some of his knowledge, life lessons, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys, if you're in his shoes and, and wondering if you could just kind of sell it all and have a, have a good time and good life in Thailand, I'm sitting beside living proof. Cheers, brother. Earth Cheers. Turn around the big old sun. I'm selling my house, my cars, my guns. Going to Thailand, have some fun. I'm going to buy Chris a beer. That's all, folks.